Hey, what's going on, everyone? How you guys doing today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater. And I know it's kind of a weird afternoon impromptu live stream. This is something I just wanted to give a shot to uh, trying these kind of like afternoon live streams to go over a particular story. So that way I can just get it done, get it out there, talk to you guys about it. And today, today is a is a is a big day uh, in, in some regards, or I should say yesterday was a big day. I was unfortunately busy and I couldn't get to it when I needed to get to it. But uh, I wanted to talk a bit about uh, why Collider is dying. In fact, actually, I'll uh, I'll bring up uh, my little graphic here. Why Collider is dying? There we go. Get rid of that. But there's a there's a good reason as to why yesterday they made the announcement that they made about uh, closing off a lot of their programs. And here's the thing: this was something that so many of us who watch YouTube, especially movie YouTubers, film YouTube, we all saw this coming. Collider found itself in a weird situation, a precarious situation, because they were overproducing and it wasn't, well, it wasn't interesting. So first, let's take a look here at the press release from yesterday, because this is where things got going. And a lot of people were talking about this. Uh, so it says here that the Collider video re refocuses its direction uh, for a new era of entertainment, right? Collider video to refocus for a new era of entertainment. And... <laughs> I mean, if you if you look at Collider video here, just real quick, we can see just from their home uh, that, uh, you know, they've got 612,000 uh, subs, you know, and they, they put out a lot of content, right? They put out they put out a great deal of content and it's you figured that would be doing pretty good. You know, 612,000 subs is no small number. The amount of content they put up, it, you know, should generally find traction. Of course, here, if you just look at what popped up two hours ago, uh, we have Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx, uh, Just Mercy, uh, Collider uh, FYC screening presented by Arclight, uh, less than 2,000 views and a 40% like-dislike ratio. So that should just give you an idea as to where things are. So anyway, let's jump back over to this. Uh, so just to make sure. All right. So our video production side has been putting out terrific content for years. But as we begin 2020, that video content will be moving into an exciting new direction. Today, our video production will be refocused towards expanding high quality, scripted, unscripted and celebrity driven content. This means that more emphasis on popular series like comic book shopping and the deep fake saga. But we also want to say goodbye to some beloved series. We will be ceasing production on Movie Talk, Collider Live, Jedi Council, and Heroes. And we cannot begin to express the depth of our gratitude to our loyal fans and to those who work tirelessly on these productions. Yeah, unless you were a person who worked on those productions and who were unceremoniously fired yesterday. Because those people didn't see this coming. From my understanding of it, I've talked to some people who, who have connections to them. And they didn't see any of this coming. So they were as shocked as everyone else who looks at Collider was shocked yesterday because they found out all of this was going away. Their job, their livelihood, brand new, brand new year, uh, rising costs of living in L.A. Now they're out of work. So, you know, when it, when it says here, we cannot begin to express the the depth of gratitude to our loyal fans and those who work tirelessly on these productions. It's a big old fat load of crap. It really, really is. Uh, now, it says we're incredibly excited about the future of our video content, and we can't wait to share our next chapter with you. Right. Because uh, the deep fake saga is predominantly what they're going to be focusing on, and I'll show you guys that uh, here in a few. Uh, but here is the full press release to get an idea. So January 2nd, 2020, uh, Collider announced today that it's a refocusing of its video content as a new and exciting era begins for the company. In its two years operating as an independent entity, Collider has steadily developed its slate of video offerings, revamping its daily programming and producing premium series, including comic book shopping, Above the Line, The Deep Fake Saga, Ladies Night, and For Your Consideration. As the production company continues expanding its commitment to high quality scripted, unscripted, and celebrity driven content across the all media and platforms, its video division will refocus its efforts on premium content that goes beyond film and television commentary. They're doubling down on the deep fake saga. That's just what you need to know about all of this right off the bat is that it's just, it's all about the deep fake saga because it's literally the only thing they've put out that has had any traction in a long time. And I can actually somewhat prove that. Uh, now it says here, the support for our original programs, 
Movie Talk, Collider Live, Jedi Council, and Heroes has been immense, and we are forever grateful to our loyal audience and everyone involved in the successful production of these shows on and off camera, says Mark Fernandez, CEO of Collider. As Collider continues to expand, we look forward to bringing our audience new and exciting video content in 2020 and beyond. Now, I think in the last year. I'm telling you right now, Collider, Collider as a video production platform, dead in a year. Dead in a year. Now, their website, their Collider News, that will be fine. That that will be okay. But <laughs> uh, everything else is going to end up being, is going to be pretty dead. Uh, all right, Collider.com, one of the most visited entertainment news websites, continues its successful in-depth reporting on the entertainment industry with breaking news, original features, and extensive interviews. It will continue working alongside both Collider Video and Collider Games, a full-service virtual reality development studio to evolve the Collider brand. <laughs> Collider. Oh my God. Okay. I, I totally overlooked this yesterday. Collider Games. I'm just going to, let me just say it real quick. Who in the F cares about Collider Games, right? Like who cares about Collider Gaming? Do you, do you care what Frosty's rank in Fortnite is? Do you hope he, do you, do you want to see <laughs> Roxy stare, get a winner, winner, chicken dinner in PUBG? Oh no, Minecraft videos. Oh my God. Uh, no one cares about Collider Gaming. Uh, I, oh my God. If you think their video production platform is terrible. Uh, oh my goodness gracious me. That is, I didn't even realize that. I honest to God didn't even realize that there was that right there. Now, what you have to remember about all of this is when they talk about Collider.com, right? This is where things get really fascinating when you look at Collider.com because that is where their bread and butter comes from and that's why they're gonna keep that going. So bringing up SimilarWeb.com, which is very similar to Alexa, but I think gives us just a little bit more in regards to the rankings uh, or at least some data we can look at here. Their November 29 overview is where we're at. So we're two months or we're really just one month off what they made. Uh, we can see here that they are ranked in entertainment, uh, arts and entertainment. They're 56. In the United States, they are 1,500, which is really good. Uh, and they're 4,700 for the global ranking. But just look here at their total visits for the website for the month of November. And that is 9.71 million. That is not a small number. That is very good traffic. They make a lot of money off their uh, ad buys. And you can see even it's a little bit down from October where it was 9.9 .9 million. Uh, going back here, 9.8 million for August. July was 10.6. And then June was 9.1. So they kind of hover in the last six months. They hover around uh, the 9.5 million range uh, for views. And that is really good. It's consistent, which means they get a lot of people. Uh, so what the hell happened to their uh to their to their video services, right? If you if you look at it from that perspective, if you really want to dive into it from that perspective then their, their video section should be doing great. But the, now we have to compare it to other outlets to see how other outlets are doing. So I wanted to um, bring up uh, Screen Rant because that's, kind of, that's a big competitor, right? They do a lot of clickbait. Now they're ranked at number 30. So they're definitely better than, uh, than Collider and they're ranked a lot higher in the United States. But look at this here. They get 40 million clicks a month. 40 million clicks with an average view duration of two minutes. That's insane. Screen Rant puts out so much content, I had to mute them from my feed. I had to remove them from my RSS feed because I get bogged down in Screen Rant articles that are just terrible. You ask anybody about Screen Rant, and they're going to tell you pitch meeting is the only reason we're paying attention to them, and I stand by that. That, that is a fantastic series. But that's just Screen Rant. And then they do, they, they, you know, but we have other ones here. Look at, uh, look at cinema blend, for example, right? They're ranked 344. Their country rank is uh 2100. So a little bit worse than collider, but they pull in, uh, you know, I mean, they pull in, uh, more views, 10.2, uh, uh, 10.28 million. And that was just for November, right? Uh, go back to October, uh, 13 million, 14 million for September. I don't even know what their December numbers are, uh, but they pull in quite a bit and they're, they're doing just fine. But cinema blend is great because they don't. They do some video stuff, but they haven't built this entire thing around it, right? They haven't built this entire world around it. And that's the problem with Collider. Even going over here, looking at Heroic Hollywood, for example, right? Hero Heroic Hollywood uh, pulls in 2.19 million clicks a month. It is relatively new, but you can see here that their number dropped uh, from 11 million in October to 2 million in November. That is such a staggering drop. One has to ask themselves, 
what the hell went wrong? Uh, and looking at Heroic Hollywood and generally how they do nothing but clickbait these days, it's just, hey, did you see this fan-made photo on Instagram? Let's write a 500-word article about it, right? That's that's what we're going to do. That's Heroic Hollywood in a nutshell. But that just goes to show you that even them are not going to be able to make that last because the content doesn't necessarily meet the demand. Uh, even SlashFilm.com does better with its uh, 3.98 million. And we can see they're pretty consistent here, right? June was 4.9 mil uh this one dropped to just about four million so they get a lot of views per month and and that works out well for them and they're pretty much just focused on doing an audio daily podcast as part of their uh non-press you know uh options so we see even even birth movies death here which is 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 the lowest of the low and that's great because these guys suck uh we can see that they've got 862,000. so the reason when i bring up this many uh this many types of content when i bring up those different types of outlets we got to see precisely why collider itself was having so many damn problems and it really does boil down to like i said their video side of it right their 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 website is doing fantastic it's making some serious green but the web the video side of it is where they start bogging it all down with uninteresting dumb stuff Let's take a look here. So again, bringing back up their YouTube page, right? We can see here that this is just uh, what they've got recently. And I mean, look, they've got 620 some odd thousand subs, 2000 views for two hours ago, five hours ago, 12,000 views. That's not bad. Uh, 21,000, 24,000, 23,000, 10,000. We can start to see an average here, right? Some of these do better than others, but they kind of hover around, uh, you know, maybe like the low, maybe like the mid teens to mid 20,000s. Uh, some of them do better, you know, like, oh, here's Roka's top five of 2019. Uh, okay. Yeah, like, I'm not going to click on that because I don't, I don't care. I actually tried meeting Roka. This is another problem with them too. And I'm, I'm going to touch upon that. Uh, you know, I'm going to touch upon that at the end there because I have some things to say about their talent uh, or lack thereof, you know, but look, I mean, they just, they pump out content more than I pump out content. And I'm one dude living in the woods outside of Seattle and Washington. And I'm one guy, but they pump out a lot of content here. And they try to push, you know, they try to push people as being these interesting talents. You know, Roka, uh, Perry. Perry's just inconsequential. That's the, the biggest problem with Perry Nemiroff is the fact that she is just vastly uninteresting. And YouTube and the video side of things is all personality driven content. That is the problem with people like Perry. Not to say she's a bad person. I've heard nothing but good things about her. But it's just that kind of stuff. Like you just don't care. It's like dry toast. You're, you're just getting this, this kind of corporate backed opinion, it feels like. And that's a lot of what happened here. When you look at like the movie talk and, and again, movie talk, 36 minutes, 12,000 views. That's it. The biggest ones though, recently are the deep fakes here, right? George Lucas and Harrison Ford react to baby Yoda, 821,000 views. Uh, we got a few other ones here that are doing really, really, really well, right? The Lucas camp out 462,000 views. That was a boring video, by the way. Uh, and I do think that the meme is starting to overstay its welcome. However, I do give credit to the very first one that they did that had uh, him reacting to the uh, Rise of Skywalker trailer because that was funny. But if you bring up their most popular, and this is where we really have to pay attention to this, right? Look at their most popular videos. What we have here is we have the Hobbit official trailer, 26 million views eight years ago, five clips from Jurassic World. Best kills in Jurassic Park trilogy, Expendables 2 official trailer, right? You can, I mean, they're just regurgitating content. Uh, they did this one here, Tom Holland's and Daya, and they play with puppies, which is a, a dog therapy, which was completely a ripoff of a Colbert bit. Uh, and that was pretty good. Uh, the deep fake here with George Lucas, that was 1.2 million views from two months ago. The uh, deep fake round table, 1.1 million. And that's why they're focusing on the deep fakes. Right now, the only thing about them that's getting any views are the deep fakes. And those take, you know, time to make they're scripted and they're maybe making some money off of it. But we're, we're at a point now we are, we're at a point right now with YouTube where what we have here is a situation where you've got the low CPM months of January and February are going to be very terrible for YouTubers who make this as their full-time job without pumping out the content. If they're slowing down their daily content and they're slowing down what they're making with that, they're not going to be making any money and they're not going to be doing uh, as well financially, but they're probably hedging their bets on the deep fake stuff and the other content as a way to start to build it up. And I just think that's going to fail, uh, given what I have said about, uh, you know, well, <laughs> when I talk about their, when I talk about their talent. So uh, here's what I want to bring up to, I want to bring up, uh, the, uh, social blade 
for Collider. This is where we get a bit of an insight into how things are for them and how they have been for their channel. Another reason why this whole thing went down the way that it did has everything to do with their analytics here. So while we can't necessarily see how many subs they've gained, I mean, they gained subs. They got a thousand on Saturday. They got another thousand on Monday. So they're getting subs. And this is recently, this is a lot to do with the deep fake stuff, I believe. But then they lost 3000 and they lost 2000. And the, you know, yeah, uh, just today when they announced the cancellation, people are, <laughs> people are leaving. People are leaving. They've, they've lost a lot of subs and they're going to continue to go down because they built their entire video platform around these shows and people just stopped watching. Uh, I mean, look at this here. So you got the, you got sub counts, right? Or no, you got, sorry, you got the video views, uh, for December. They did 5.7 million, which is really good. But a lot of that was the deep fake stuff. A lot of that was that it wasn't their basic everything. Go back here to September, 2.9 million views for everything they have. 2.9 million views in September. Come down here to their subs. We can see in September, they only gained 1,800 subscribers. October, they went up to 4,000. But then in November, when they started dropping those deep fakes and that's became popular, they gained 15,000. And then last month, they gained 13,000. When you start to look at that perspective, you start seeing exactly where they're going to start putting all of their efforts. All their efforts are all going to be all about where it stands from that analytical perspective. So why why not just focus on the deep fake stuff? Look, they're funny. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, those are, those are funny. But the content that is celebrity driven, like the for your consideration, 2000 views in a couple hours, those videos do some of the lowest. They put on these screening events in LA because they play up the celebrity connection, which is exactly what Collider has been about. If you've been paying attention at all, they like, and I, and I would give credit to Mark Fernandez here for being able to like navigate the, the, you know, the PR world of Hollywood to position collider people, uh, in these good places that can be, uh, vessels for information, right? They can be vessels for clicks, you know, but they're not necessarily the most interesting personality wise. When I talk about Perry again, she seems nice, but just kind of bland, like dry toast, uh, Roca, I met Roca. I tr well, I tried meeting Roca when I was in LA. Uh, for Star Wars a few weeks ago, he was at the same screening as me. I saw him. I said, hey, Roka, ignored me. I was like three feet away from him, right? I waited a few minutes. I tried it again. said, hey, Roka, what's going on? Ignored me. And I just kind of went, that's rude. And then people I was with were like, he's kind of a jerk. He's kind of a jerk. The, 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 the personality driven content that comes out of Collider has, in my opinion, been entirely based around ego, right? And this is what happens when they spent the last two years building up the ego of their reporters and their talent versus actually trying to find interesting people. The last interesting person that was on Collider was Harloff and Harloff bailed. And when Harloff bailed, that basically kind of just said, this is where we are. This is where everything is, you know, and you can kind of see the ending coming down the pipeline. Now, look, there's another competitor that I didn't bring up that I do want to touch upon real quick. And that's Screen Junkies here because Screen Junkies is a, you know, they're, 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 de they're kind of tied together. They're kind of tied together. We can see here that Screen Junkies, though, has 6.65 million subscribers, not 621,000, but 6.65 million. And they put out a lot of different content. They put out here a great deal of content, right? They did a decade in film three days ago, 290,000 views. Serious questions. Uh, Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, 154,000 views. We can see that they start, they're getting a lot more views for very similar content, even though they focus quite often on the honest trailers and everything else, but they at least try to create interesting content. Collider, <laughs> it just, it really, it really doesn't. It just, it really, it really just doesn't, you know, this like, you look at the newest stuff here and it's just like, you know, do you really care? Do, do you really, you, do you really care about, about Dorian's top five? of 2019, right? Do you, do you care about their social media managers top five? Because that's what the guy is. And no, no, no insult to him, but as a, as a consumer of, of personality driven content, do you care? Do you care about Roka? Do you care about Jeff Snyder? Who, by the way, is still working there. I believe he, they, they got rid of Perry. They got rid of John. Uh, he's still got a job there, right? So, you know, he's, he's uninteresting too. These, these people are just they, and I'm a person who loves the industry. Okay. I'll be fair. I'm a person who loves the industry, but even I look at them and I go, yeah, I know you guys are kind of corporate sellouts <laughs> and I get called a shill all the time because I'm a big star Wars fan and everything else. But like, I look at these guys and I, I try watching them and it's like nothing interesting comes out 
of their mouths. And I think that's done because they don't want to ruffle any feathers. And if you don't want to ruffle any feathers and you don't want to be your own personality, that then causes a problem, which is why John Campia's response yesterday was what I was really interested in. Okay? He says here, my final word on it is this. One of many reasons I left was because I recognized that the new leadership who I personally liked was focused on, on and obsessed with two things, trends and celebrities, and clearly had little interest in our commentary programs. Today is the end game of that. This is the definitive word on Collider. Campia busted it out just perfect because when you look at this, Campia has gone on and he has absolutely smashed Collider. One man, one man who left there has completely destroyed the video platform. And it's not even to say that Campia is, is, is well loved. As far as I, I mean, you talk to a lot of people out there and they hate Campia. He gets brought up a lot as just being a smug, condescending dude, but he gets 2000 to 3,500 people watching his live streams every single day. He gets 1500 to 2000 people watching him answer super chats. I mean, like this dude is like the, the definition of pay to play in regards to YouTube commentary. I mean, you have to super chat him in order to talk to him. Otherwise he doesn't interact with any of them at all, period. But you, you watch him and he's got his audience trained. And I'll tell you, I was at Comic-Con. He was on a panel. Uh, with Harloff and I wanted to say hi afterward because I, I do like Campia and I do like everything else. You know, I watch his content and, and I, I wanted to meet him and say hi. And the guy in front of me was asking him a question uh, that they had, he's, but he had a follow-up question and he was like, I, I can't think of it right now. So something else I wanted to ask you, uh, you know what? I'll just super chat it to you. And that made me take a step back and go, wait, what? Huh? Like in my mind, I'm like, wow, you've got, I mean, crack that whip, John, you got these people trained. They want to talk to you. They're going to have to pay out some serious green. Oh my God. You're like, I, that's where I was at. And John, to his credit, to his absolute credit. And I give him, I seriously give him credit here. He said, point blank. No, don't do that. Uh, just, just email me and I'll answer the question, right? Just email me and we'll talk. I give him credit on that front. This dude has his audience trained. He pulls in bank every single month, more money probably than Collider makes off his video platform. And, and maybe definitely not the, the, the website side of things. But his overhead is so much lower. He works out of his home. He he brings over, you know, he's got a little studio. He doesn't rent a warehouse, which is what Collider does. So you can see here that the whole concept of what he brought to, to Collider and what he built up at Collider, he took with him when it left. And there was a focus on trends and there was a focus on celebrities. And that's still what they're doing. Celebrity driven content, the deep fake saga. That's what they want. They want to focus on these trends by thinking that that's going to end up making them sustain themselves in this current YouTube culture. And I'm telling you, it's not going to work. What they should have done, and this is my professional opinion, is find some people with some actual hardcore opinions. Harloff worked well because Harloff was kind of like that dude. Harloff was that guy that dove into it that didn't care. You know, like he didn't care. And people responded to that. He was an actual personality. And he, <laughs> that was why he worked. And don't get me wrong. Look, I I'm critical of the people on Collider because I watch it and I'm like, oh, I love the concept of movie talk. I love the idea of just sitting down, having a panel, talking about the news of the day. It's very well produced. It's kind of like CNN for movies, very well produced and shit. And I enjoy it and I enjoy watching that. But then when you get into the opinions and it's like, oh, none of this is interesting. None of you have a hot take that I care about. None of this is going to keep me coming around for more. And then also, and this is, again, this is my take on this, the lack of actual in interaction with the community. I know on Collider Live, they would take some calls and they would do some stuff, but it's like they, I, as far as I know, it always felt like Collider just kind of sent eh, to the community. They wanted to build it around having connections to celebrities, right? They wanted to build it around having those connections and getting those for your consideration arc light screenings. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. We got Ryan Johnson to come out for knives out. Everybody. We got Ryan Johnson. Everyone's going to care. No one cared. Right. But they do that because they want to maintain that, that level of like, Hmm, I am, uh, I am a powerful player in the game. You ain't variety. You ain't the Hollywood reporter. You're a blog and, and a YouTube channel. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing bad with that. There's nothing terrible with that, but know what you have and build off of what you can. And I, listen, like, you look at it and it's not only that they had like podcast networks and it's like their podcast barely get any views. Uh, the, you know, they would run an ad for their other shows during movie talk or other programs. And I'm like, 
I'm watching an ad that's boring, by the way, for the same people that I am watching on this thing right now for other shows. If I don't care about their opinion here, I'm not going to care about their opinion there. You know, I'm just not going to do it. Now, I don't see a problem ultimately with them slowing things down, pulling things back and finding out a better way to make it work. But by canceling their shows, they've just basically now killed whatever audience they have. And you want to know what killed it even worse than this, guys? And I've been talking about this forever. I've been laughing my ass off about this forever. When they decided to try to go after John Campia's time slot, I legitimately just went, what? I went, wait, 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 what? Campy is on at 9 a.m. Sometimes he does 8 a.m. He's tweaked it a little bit, but he's on at 9 a.m. to 11 roughly. Now, all of a sudden, Collider Movie Talk was like, we're going to be on at 9 o'clock in the morning as well. Like You guys are splitting your audience, and your audience is not coming to you. You're not hurting Campia by trying to take his time slot. You are just screwing yourself. That, to me, was the last act of absolute desperation. When they decided to run against Campia on the time slot, because they've jumped movie talk around. Oh, we're doing a, we're doing a, a noon show. We're doing a 4 p.m. show. We're doing a, a 9 a.m. show. It's like, to get in a, pick 11 a.m., stick to 11 a.m., because it's two on the East Coast, it's 11 a.m. in L.A., people are, whatever, they're at work and stuff like that. They could listen to you guys before they go on lunch, or do it at noon, or like Grace Randolph said, do it at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, and then people are going to be in transit one way or the other, and you're going to be able to find an audience there. And then build up the damn community, like build it up. They have this massive, massive, massive opportunity to actually achieve what they want, and they just, they they were like, let's just stack it with uninteresting people. It is, it, it's, it's, uh People like me spend our whole damn career trying to get to that point, right? Trying to get to the point where we're like, we upgrade our gear. You know, we upgrade our tech, we upgrade our stuff. I've got a, I've got like a five, $6,000 setup. I'm not even using my webcam right now because StreamYard is terrible at it. And I just, I just wanted to dive into this, but we spend all of our time and our money and our resources building up these, this, this quality level to try to bring to you the same type of quality that they bring. And at the end of the day, a dude with a camera and a microphone is far more influential, far more interesting than a panel of, of, of just non-interesting, you know, corporate jargon spewing personalities. Like, for example, and I'm bringing up Perry again, only because this is just what I have. I'm, I'm at the movie theater a while back and I, and I get there early and I'm watching there, you know, at the movies, whatever. And all of a sudden I see Perry Nemiroff on screen and I'm like, why in the hell is Perry Nemiroff on screen? Like, good for her for getting in this position, obviously. But no one in this theater is going to know who the hell she is. No one in this theater is going to know who she is. No one's going to care who she is. She's not a recognizable name in the mainstream, but they were trying to push her in the mainstream. And then I didn't see her again. I don't know how that whole thing came to be. I don't know what happened with it. All I know is I saw it and I was laughing. Because it's like when you have a situation like that, and it's like you're trying to push these people into the mainstream in order to boost up your brand. You need better people. You need better people. You need interesting talent. You need people who actually, actually can get people talking. You know, you, you have to try this and everything else. It's just, ugh, God, it drives me up the damn wall. And I mean, really all things considered the, the best goddamn thing that ever has come out of Collider was that uh, Harrison Ford Frosty uh, who shot first uh, conversation, that little clip, right? That little clip. And I'm trying to find it if I can. Uh, it's so, it's so quick. Uh, so quick. If anyone, I, I don't know. It's, I, it's, uh, okay. Uh, I looking on YouTube right now. I, I can't really find just the clip of it, which is unfortunate, but basically Frosty just goes and asks Harrison Ford. Oh, what do you think about like Han shooting first? And Han just goes, I don't, uh, Harrison Ford just goes, I don't care. Like that is what they're known for. That is what they are known for, and that's it. But yet they go to Comic Con, they host panels, they they do all these things with the system, with the studios. They go to, they travel to these events, and they they get nothing. You know, Harloff didn't get invited to Galaxy's Edge opening, and he blew a gasket over it because he runs a podcast that's Jedi Council. But yet, other other reporters who have an in with Disney Parks are the ones who got the invite. You know what I mean? You can start to see a disconnect there. And that's because I think ultimately Mark Fernandez simply did not, does not fully understand the video marketplace where, where we find ourselves right now. And that's why Collider Video changing things up to the deep fake saga and everything else is just going to end up killing itself in the, in the long run. Anyway, 
That is my 30 minute rant about why Collider is dying. We'll take a few minutes of questions and comments uh, and then I have to run, but I just want to keep this short and kind of to the point. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Toxic personalities like Roxy and Roka drove people away in droves. Um, I didn't hear Roxy was, 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 was toxic, but I did hear, I mean, my interaction with Roka of like just getting outright ignored and I'm trying to say hi and I'm two feet away. That could be a thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, all right. Okay. You wouldn't say that Roxy is toxic compared to Roka or Hector Navarro. Um, probably. I mean, she seems okay. I was watching her bit of her live stream from yesterday. So, uh, <laughs> stop being right. It's annoying. No, no wandering ranger. I'm not going to stop being right. Uh, Collider is too woke. Maybe that can be a problem. James Tyler, by the way, I love your avatar. Uh, uh, Triumph is amazing. And that's possible. Uh, even Dory here says Collider was too liberal. I'm, I'm a liberal person. I'm a liberal person. And, in and, 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 you know, I, I guess that's a problem. Like I have no problem with that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. There's an ad for movie talk when you were theater watching Aquaman. Okay. That might've been it. It might've been when I was watching Aquaman. Uh, let's see here. Uh, all right. Uh, Roxy is condescending. comes off as fake. That's I've seen a lot of that one. Roxy's annoying as hell. Roxy is not. Wow. People who really don't like, uh, they like that. Uh, no, I know, I know Campy had a studio for a bit, but remember like he also, he also went off and did, uh, he went to that other location where you can like rent studio space. And he tried doing that a few months ago before it just ended up, uh, uh doing everything else. Uh, Campy has the super chats in the Patreon. Oh no, no. I know Nathan. I know. Cause remember I've, I've joked with you. I've seen you at like midnight the night before when Campia, uh, had posted that his stream was going to be going up in the morning. You super chatted like one of the first people. So I've seen you do it. That's I told you, I've given you crap about that too. Uh, all right, let's see here. Kyle Newman on rebel force radio said that he knew several film journalists and filmmakers gave. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, well, I don't know. I mean, Campia didn't like the rise of Skywalker and, uh, Campia, uh, and Newman are friends, but uh, I mean, yeah, Kyle Newman has said that, uh, let's see here, uh, with great hosts like, uh, Harloff, Campy, Schnepp, et cetera, are gone. The show's kind of suck. Yeah. I didn't want to bring up Schnepp because that's not like anyone's specific fault. I mean, the dude died, you know, and I like Schnepp. Schnepp was awesome. Like Schnepp was a guy that you could pay attention to. He was a good personality because he was that type of guy. But yeah, uh, I, I agree with you on that. Uh, let's see here. Campia is a smug condescending shill. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Uh, all right. I can't stand Roka. A lot of people I've told that they've told me that. Uh, let's see. Consider canceling movie talk is like dashy uh, canceling gaming. Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's just, they should keep that around, but refocus on getting better entertainment in there, getting better people having, you know, having movie talk and then having collider live and caring about bringing in celebrities. It's like, yeah, just, it's, I don't, I, I'm not against them bringing in celebrities, but that, but when they're not focused around that type of celebrity interview, when their you know, own interviews do terrible, actually, I, I totally forgot to bring that up here. Let me find that page. I did have that here. When we talk about their interviews, this is, uh, this is also a factor too. Their interviews don't do much, uh, in regards to that. So, uh, looking over here real quick, we can see that, uh, you've got, you know, Tim Blake Nelson and, and Rob Morgan talk, just mercy, 220 views. Uh, Michelle Monaghan, uh, 1.6K, uh, 1917 co-writer, uh, Christy Wilson, 340 views. Look at this here. Adam Sandler, 2.2 thousand. I mean, it's like, you know, Sam Mendes here. Nine, I mean, look at this. These, these get nothing. These get like nothing for views. I mean, like my friend, Louis Lecca from nerd report gets invited to the same junk as these guys do. And flat out, he gets like, he gets more views than Collider, but Collider gets way more access. And this probably has more to do with the amount of people that go to the website. But if this stuff's being posted on the website and they get 10 million clicks a month, almost, um, it's not translating over. It's just not, it's just not translating over. And as a result of that, it becomes, uh, it becomes a problem. Uh, let's see here. My limited experience with Collider is that they have a lot of, uh, bad trend hopping, uh, hot take opinions. Yeah. I heard them talk about James Gunn last year or almost two years ago, year and a half ago. And I wasn't really, uh, wasn't really in on it. So let's see here. Uh, okay. If there were any super chats that came in, I totally, uh, did not see them, but I don't think any, any did. So there's that. Uh, okay. Uh, they are terrible at interviewing. Well, it's, it's a process to interview. Like I like Howard Stern's approach to it. He like took psychology classes to really understand how to listen and how to ask good questions. And that's something that's really, you can make an interesting conversation. Interesting. If you, uh, if, if you can come at it from that perspective, it's really about breaking down the barriers of, of the people you're talking to. But at the same time, when they do like these five minute press junkets that everyone else does, it, it just, it sucks. No, who here? Okay. If you guys like press junkets, 
uh, in the chat. Uh, let me know if you like that. If you like those press interviews, the celebrity five minute interviews, press one, if not press two, uh, let's see here. The star Wars stuff is too long. Probably laundry day. There's, you know, right. We're even right now we're, we're going to be in the slump of star Wars. So, uh, there's that, uh, let's see, uh, hold on. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. Low views is the reason why can't be says he doesn't do celebrity interviews anymore. Yeah. You don't have to. Why, why go to those locations? And, uh, and, and, and do that. Why, why go to those locations and actually like be a part of that? You don't have to, you don't have to at all. Uh, Howard Stern's uh, interviews are very entertaining. A hundred percent. Uh, actually, uh, let's see here. You didn't know that Jeremy Johns was on Collider before. Yeah, he was, he was. And then he went back to Seattle and Jeremy Johns, uh, you know, he's got a good, he's got a good thing going on. He's an entertaining guy. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of his personality, but I can admit and I can acknowledge and I can respect that he has a personality and people like him for that. So when you're watching Jer Jeremy Johns, you can see all of that kind of play out. And, and, and so you can jump onto that. Campia has a personality, whether you like him or not, you know, and you can jump onto that. His, his co-hosts, not so much. I'm sorry. I don't think I have nothing against Robert Myers Burnett, but I don't think he's that interesting. But guy. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. From what do you hear? The woke Roka's out. Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah. Ro Roka's out. Roka's out. Uh, here we go. Uh, with Collider gone, who will RLM make fun of now? Oh, they're going to go after Campia, man. They're going to go. I think they're going to have to go after Campia. Otherwise, there's no one. I mean, they might go after Dan Merle uh, over at Screen Junkies, uh, which would be like maybe the next target to do. But they'll probably just keep the nerd crew going for a while and uh, see that. All right. Axel here says, in the end, Collider became too mediocre to make an impact either way. Mediocrity kills more than being woke. You know what, Axel? You're right, man. You're right. When you... And this is something I've dealt with in my own my own career here, where it's like I'm a neutral person in general. But if you don't, if if you always play it from like the I don't want to offend anybody mentality, then no one talks about you. You know, like I criticized the fandom menace twice last week and wrecked them both twice last week and they can't stop talking about me. So there's that, you know, uh, you have to kind of play those games. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but you have to also be fair. Uh, let's see. They went hard in the Me Too movement. Oh, yeah, no, that could that could probably turn off people as well. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Collider became unwatchable after Schnepp. Unfortunately, he was a positive force. Yeah, he was. He really was. When he passed away, that, that, that was a big, they didn't spend the time focusing on trying to find the right talent. And then that's, that's a big factor. That's a big problem with that. So, uh, there's that. Uh, okay. Uh, what do I like about RMB? I find Robert Meyer Burnett to be kind of like Perry Nimeroff. Like he's got a bit more personality, but I just, I don't care about what he says. I've tried, I've listened to Rob observations. I've, I've heard him on there and he just kind of comes across like a sidekick and, uh, not an interesting one. You know, like I, if I'm watching, let's say Conan O'Brien, I love me some Andy Richter because Richter gets brought in on the jokes and Richter gets to play up a lot of stuff. Robert, my Burnett is the kind of guy you're like, Oh, he's a dude that John Campia pays $50 a day to, to come on four days a week. Right. And that's it. And, and, and otherwise it's just kind of like, is he just there to be less interesting than John Campia? And to make Campia's opinions seem a lot more energetic because Campia will at least get energized. Robert kind of sits there and he just kind of has this, like, he's like me. If I'm, if I'm in a, if I'm in a show, right? Like right now I'm amped up, I'm amped up. I'm right. But if I'm in the show and I'm listening to other people that are talking and I'm not, and it's, it's a lot of people or it's just a lot of conversation. Uh, I look like I have a resting bitch face because I'm listening. And then it's trying to find a way to respond. Like, and I kind of feel like that's Robert, but it's just like, it, it just, but you never get anything lively out of him. You know, it's, he's like, he's like the boomer take for, uh, for Campia. Campia is like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to play to the, to the Gen Xers or to the, you know, to that crowd. He's around that age. I think we're both around this. I think we're both around the same zennial age or whatever. But Robert is kind of like the dude who's like, oh, this is what your, your, your uncle would say. Your uncle who spent a lot of time reading comics in a basement when he was a kid. This is what his take would be. And it's interesting but in short doses and that sounds mean and I'm not trying to be mean. I don't think he's a bad guy. I just don't find him that engaging. I, I'm sorry. I just don't. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you love Campia rants. Uh, yeah, me too. Uh, I do. Uh, let's see. Uh, R and B is a straight man. Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. And I'm kind of tired of straight men. Like I just, I am, I'm kind of tired of that. If there's nothing there, like, like Campia will go off occasionally when he, when he allows himself to go off, you know, when he goes off in those like expletive laden rants, those are pretty funny. Um, but other than that, it's just kind of like, you know, it's like a dude with a crew cut talking with an old boomer about movies. And it's like, okay, occasionally you're going to get something that's going to blow your skirt up. 
Uh, <laughs> let's see. Much like people in the fandom menace, I I love I too love fingering my prostate over the hatred of all things pop culture. Yeah, that's true, man. That's the best way to not. Uh, let's see here. To be fair, his Star Trek Blu-rays are very. Much, I'm not criticizing his his work ethic or things that he's done in Star Trek. You know, I've heard good things about him and whatnot. You know, I've heard good things. It's just my take on his personality, and he may not like my personality, and that's okay. You know, that's okay. It's like we don't all have to like everybody. Um, you know, I, I just feel like that's the kind of guy that he is. Um, but I will, I will say this though, when I saw him at Comic-Con, cause he moderated the panel that Campia and Harloff are on, uh, he also had a fair amount of people that were going that were surrounding him in the end. You know, he wasn't off in the corner, like nobody likes me. No, people were, people were going up getting selfies and they were talking about stuff. So he's got his own audience and that's fantastic. Uh, let's see here. Do I, uh, plans to upgrade anything else in the future? Um, yeah, I would like to upgrade, uh, my capture card because I, I'm having some issues with the one that I bought and it was fucking expensive. It was like 440 bucks a couple of years ago. Um, and cause I'm having issues with the camera. I might stutter a bit. And then I also would like to, uh, get some better lighting and, and, uh, upgrade maybe my desk and like rebuild my studio. Um, that's, that's where I'm at, but that's all down the road. I also just kind of prefer doing it like this because I don't have to, I don't have to front, you know, I don't have to front. I don't have to like, I'm wearing just a t-shirt and sweats, you know, I don't have to like, my hair isn't even done. Yeah. Uh, like, no, I, I like, I like this. This is my, my preferred approach anyway. Uh, okay. Hi, I'm Roxy. I'm so sorry. Here's a hundred dollars. I love you. Oh, uh, is, <laughs> wait, was that on there or what? I don't know what that was. Uh, let's go okay, on. Uh, how long until Collider goes completely under? Collider will go completely under um, their video production side of it. I, I I say by the end of 2020, maybe mid 2021, at their current rate. If the deep fake, because the deep fake stuff's going to eventually fall off, it is. Uh, it just really is. It's like it's fun now, but it's like once we have no more Star Wars, and and what do we have? We have Black Widow. They're going to do deep fakes of Scarlett Johansson. I mean, that could go good or go bad, really. You know what I mean? And like that could go. Is this? They're going to run out of those kind of things uh, because we're not going to be in peak Star Wars territory for a while. We have we have uh, you know Clone Wars season seven and then nothing till Mando season two. So uh, let's see here. Uh, you'll donate more. Why? Well, hey, I appreciate it, man. Uh, let's see. Collider were mostly stubborn, uh, suburban douchebags trying to act like they were hip and down. It kind of feels that way a little bit. Uh, it kind of feels that way a bit, but it's, again, that's like, I would just like there to be more personality, more arguments on there, like actual fights. Like, uh, like I was talking with uh nerd Lekka, uh, Lewis Lekka from nerd report yesterday and, uh, or no, like the other day on, no, I think I don't remember like two days ago on the phone, we're talking about the Snyder cut for 45 minutes. And I was yelling at him at one point. I'm like on the phone because he was so wrong with everything he was saying. It was a hundred percent inaccurate. And I was like, and I know he was baiting me. He was so baiting me into a fight, but I was like yelling at him on the phone for 45 minutes. And he's like, we should have just recorded this. I'm like, it would have been really funny. You know what I mean? Like, that's the kind of thing like that would be interesting to listen to Two near one middle age, one near middle age men arguing over uh, whether or not the Snyder cut actually exists. Like that was a fun conversation and we'll probably to do that again. Uh, hi, Jeremy. How you doing, buddy? Uh, let's see here. Have I seen the upper, uh, I haven't seen the upper echelon video about the YouTube algorithm yet. I know you sent it to me. Uh, why did Harlov block you on Twitter, man? Hell, if I know, hell, if I know I'm blocked by Grace Randolph, I don't know why I'm blocked by Harloff. I don't know why. You know, like I met Harloff and I said, Hey, I'm, I'm the guy that called you entitled on YouTube when that whole thing went down. And I want to say, I'm sorry for kind of being a dick. And he's like, well, as at least you can admit it, you know, and we talked for a few minutes and he's a pretty cool dude. I don't know why he blocked me. I don't know what I did to Harloff. Uh, let's see. Okay. It's kind of telling, uh, when Campy will have no trouble talking about his AMC days, despite his issues with the company yet. We'll never mention his collider years, uh, even by name, unless he really had to, well, he doesn't want, he, I, I would argue that there's some kind of non-disclosure. Uh, I would argue that, uh, he doesn't want to like, maybe he doesn't want to like, uh, th feel like he's throwing his friends under the bus. You know, he still has a lot of, I think, respect for some of those people, but I would argue there's a, there's, there's a pretty massive NDA in place and nerd report here. Yep. Yep. I was, what I was yelling at you, Lewis. I was absolutely, absolutely yelling at you. You know that, uh, let's see here. Uh, do I like Jeremy Johns or Chris Stuckman? I prefer Stuckman. I really can't stand Jeremy Johns editing. Uh, it, it drives me up the wall. Uh, let's see here. Uh, all right. Let me just, uh, okay. Let's see here. Ro Everyone really hates Roxy. I mean, I had no issue with her. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I had no problem with her. We'll see. We'll see where she lands after this. Are there any friends of the Phantom Menace that still remain? I don't think I had any friends in the Phantom Menace. 
<laughs> I don't think I think once one of them threatens to sue you because of mild light criticism and then tags the FBI in it, <laughs> they're really they're they're gonna draw a line in the sand and then not want to deal with you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Campia and Suckman aren't doing the worst movies of 2019. Yeah, that's good, actually. I'm I'm okay with that one. Uh, I'm okay with that one. So, oh, go, uh, Gun Garga says I also told them that their site will die off soon. Yeah, well, that's I, 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 the site. The site is is they get they get the hits, so the site's going to be fine. But Collider Video is going to be dead. Uh, all right, uh, read this. Most big movie YouTubers obtain their following because they worked for major corporations before going solo, not organic at all. Thoughts? Well, it actually that happens quite often, right? So it's kind of like people. Uh, this is going to be a weird comparison, but hear me out. People who work in the Trump administration or just any presidential administration. Let, let's be fair about that. Any presidential uh, administration. And or campaign or something where there's high, high visibility via politics. You make a splash. People think you're controversial. You end up walking away from your job. You sign a six or seven figure book deal. And then you get hired on one of the cable outlets as a news contributor. Right. Look at Megan McCain. Megan McCain's on The View. Highly controversial. Lots of things with her all the time. How did she get there? Well, it's not because her last name isn't McCain. You know? Uh, it's, <laughs> it's like her father was a, was a former presidential candidate, uh, and, and a, and a very well-known and well-beloved Senator and in many, in many circles. And she used that as a way to get into, uh, her position and many positions. So yeah, nepotism and cronyism is a big thing. Cronyism specifically when you come off of these sort of things. So if I were to be hired by a company like AMC, or let's say, for example, I was to be hired by a company like Collider right? And I worked my ass off for Collider and I built up a strong following with Collider fans. And then I was fired. I would still have those fans and I could then find a way to push it into it, right? Uh, the biggest problem is going to come from now that everyone's kind of gone. The, well, most of the people are kind of gone. Uh, they're going to run into a big problem where they have to now like fend for themselves. And that's maybe could potentially split uh, the, uh, the, the fan base a bit. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay. Chris Stuckman, uh, was in the collider. Uh, no, I don't know. I, I don't know. No, no. Uh, J uh, Jeremy Jones. I don't know. If, I don't know Chris Stuckman's story. If I'm being honest with you. Um, let's see here. Jeremy, Chris and Schmoes all had their following before collider. Chris only worked at screen junkies, but he was already big. Okay. There was that one. I, 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 you know, I never followed these guys for a long time when I was living and working in LA, I was trying to build up like actually like making movies and whatnot. It wasn't until after that I got into the punditry of being talking about movies so a lot of these players, I, I didn't know. I did not know. Uh, okay, yeah, look at Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden's a very good example, right? He got Burisma Oil, a board, million dollars a year because uh, of his dad. So there's that. All right, so uh, Star Wars is one of those fan bases that is a loyal fan base, but also a toxic fan base that ignores a lot of source material, like the Predator and Alien fan base. Well, I mean, you know, you don't really hear much out of the Predator and Alien fan base much anymore, but I see your point. Um, okay. What do I think of YouTube creator or when do I think YouTube creators will be able to make a home run on a show, whether it be cable or streaming? Well, Lily Singh is on network television right now doing a late night show. Uh, it's actually doing okay in the ratings. Never mind it being unfunny and boring as sin, but she's doing okay to her audience. And I think if that does well, we're going to see a lot more personalities from the internet age. These quote unquote influencers, uh, come out and, and do that kind of stuff. Like me personally, I would like to do this as a podcast, like every day, just talk to you guys, what's going on and stuff. That'd be great for me. Uh, okay, so was Roxy the annoying chick on Collider? I don't remember her name, but there was one chick that would say ridiculous stuff when she opened her mouth. Maybe? Maybe. Uh, Jedi Council was fun when Christian was there. It loved Ken, so thankfully Force Center is still around. Heroes was meh. I found Koi to be a condescending spaz. No real loss there. Yeah, that's a fair statement right there. I mean, also like uh, Roka, just, uh, I try watching Mailbag and I would just get bored. Uh, a lot of their fan base already went to Schmoes. And Schmoes is the same concept as Collider Live. It's trying to be radio, which I get. But I, I tuned in uh, to one of the episodes today as I was prepping for this video. And I and I even find that to be too too boring. It's too many people. It's it's meant to be this this big chat, but it's like it's too many people, and I just got bored. Uh do I watch Grace Randolph? I do watch Grace Randolph. Yeah, I do. Uh it'd be sad if Rule of Two goes away. I, I think that's gonna be on the chopping blocks next. Uh, cause the Jedi council felt like more, their more popular show, but without Harloff there and the new people just weren't cutting it, but rule of two they've got. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's see, Jeremy and Chris would have crossovers with Schmoes, but they had their own thing. Uh, okay. So there's that. Uh, let's see here. You've been, uh, busting your ass, uh, being a fan for five years. <laughs> I just want to go to galaxy's edge. <laughs> That's great guys. Uh, okay. So. 
uh, Campia, Harloff, Ellis, Schnepp, and Johns, the good old dream team. And again, people with personalities that enjoy talking about what they talk about. Uh, you kind of don't really think about that anymore with Collider. So, all right, guys, I think that is going to be where I leave it here. 50 minutes is a pretty good run for this video, so people can sit there and catch it uh, later on. And I do appreciate uh, everyone coming in and everyone chit-chatting with me for the last uh, 50 minutes. I'll be probably live tonight on Hollywood After Dark, but not till around midnight Pacific Standard, just because I have things to do. Uh, but if you like this video, if you like this kind of content, please let me know in the comment section of the video, not just here in the chat, but in the comment section of the video, if you like these kind of longer form, just a deep dive and then a conversation, I'm more than happy to do it. Uh, let's have yourself a good, uh, a good day, good weekend. I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day and peace out.